Hi, I'm Phil Town from Rule One Investing, and today I want to talk to you about the death of value investing as we know it. As a reminder, make sure you guys click the subscribe button and bell icon to get notifications when I release new videos. Buying low and selling high makes a lot of sense in theory, right? But try and apply that to a complex moving parts of today's stock market, and it won't look quite as simple as it sounds. The truth is, value investing, buy low, sell high, has changed a lot since it was invented by Ben Graham um, right in the Depression in the 1930s. Ben wrote a book called Security Analysis in 1934 that's the Bible of value investing. But things are different. With today's market the way it is, can we even find businesses on sale at all? Or is value investing dead? Value investing may not work the way it did a century ago, but investors can grow wealth by utilizing value investment techniques in a new way. So what is true value investing? So our famous you know, grandfather of ruler type investing here is Ben uh, Graham, who developed value investing strategies during the late 1920s and 1930s when the depression started ravaging the financial landscape. What he did is he looked at the financial integrity of a company's business to see if you know, the depression itself was pricing the stock improperly. And he developed very specific monetary criteria for identifying stocks that had a very strong likelihood of having value higher than the price. And what that means is that he looked at companies that were on sale in his view uh, compared to the actual value. And he called this kind of investing cigar butt investing. Now these are just some of Graham's criteria for cigar butt investing. So he was looking at stocks that had an S&P bond rating of B or higher so that they had relatively good, uh, good credit. He was looking at companies that had a relatively low debt ratio, right, of a dollar of debt for every $10 they had of assets, or of equity rather. He looked at bargain prices. He wanted to review companies that had PE ratios in the single digits, okay? So their price, their earnings would represent uh, one ninth or less of the price, or one ninth or greater of the price, I guess you could say. So PE ratios of nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, like that. He looked at stocks that were already paying dividends, right? Cash was coming off of them. And he was looking at companies that were really, really, really super underpriced, so far underpriced that you could buy those companies, some of them, for the cash they had in the bank minus their debt. In other words, literally, if Graham was able to buy the entire company, he was paying a price that if he just stopped the company dead, took the cash out, paid the debt, he would have what he paid for the company and he would own the company for free. So that's how cheap things were. So one of the expectations that Graham set for value investing was that other investors would also uncover the intrinsic value of these stocks. When other people jumped on the bandwagon, then these undervalued stocks would rise um, toward their true value. So what made Graham really rich was he would get these companies before um, other investors would start to realize just how cheap they were. He'd get them for pennies on the dollar. And he called them cigar butts because some of them just didn't work out, right? They were, they, were su they were super cheap and they were super cheap for a reason. And that reason eventually put him out of business. So you know, to make up for that, he would buy a couple hundred of these things at a time, 100, 200. And of course, during the depression and World War II, there were companies like this all over the place. So one of the things that Graham did that was really smart is that he didn't like taking a lot of risk. So he looked at what's the company's liquidation value. You remember the Hollywood movie, Pretty Woman? So Richard Gere's character is basically this guy that buys companies below their liquidation value when they're in trouble and then sells off the whole company in pieces and takes his profit. Now, essentially, that's Graham's thinking in a nutshell. He would buy a company so cheap that if he couldn't just buy it for the price of the cash, he knew that at least he could take the company apart and sell it off for the pieces. Now, the problem with that is uh, if you actually do that, just like Richard Gere's character, people can come to hate you. 
And Warren Buffett, having learned this at Graham's knee, applied this principle one time in his life that I know about. He went over near Omaha, another town in Nebraska, and he bought a company, it was so cheap, it was cheaper than all of the parts sold off individually. And so Buffett, thinking he was applying this great value strategy, bought the company, super cheap, split it up into the pieces, sold it off, and what that did was cause a lot of people in that little town to lose their jobs. And man, did they hate the name of Warren Buffett in that town. And Warren never did that again the rest of his life. So, you know, you just gotta kinda take a look at some of this stuff, the way things worked during the Depression. You know, maybe that's not the way they work anymore. So we've gotta come up with a little bit different way of looking at companies. If a stock is priced in such a way that a company's assets are worth more than the value of the company, it could be really an indication of a good deal, right? So we still use that. Um, we call that zombie uh, value or zombie investing. We don't use it a lot. That's not one of the three investing methods we teach a lot because it's very, very rare to find a company other than a bank to be for sale at a zombie price. So Graham had a lot of options during the Great Depression. Um, you can still kind of use this today, but it's, it's difficult. We don't do it very often. We call it zombie investing, by the way, because effectively what it says is I want to buy this company at a price that is as, as if the company is the walking dead. And I'm just gonna put them out of its misery and sell off the pieces. Now, Buffett took this a whole new place. He was a Graham disciple, obviously. He continued to look at super cheap prices like that thing in, outside of Omaha. But by the 1960s, this market had changed a lot. Graham had retired. Things weren't the way they were anymore. And finding stocks at super cheap pennies on the dollar became more and more difficult. And Buffett found himself having to be more and more genius. Like one time he was running, I think, coffee beans across New York, trying to make a deal. But it got harder and harder to find companies that were on sale. Um, and harder and harder to, to, to find ones that were on sale that were any good, right? You can always find companies that are cheap by value investing standards, they're single digit companies, but that doesn't mean they're a good deal. It doesn't mean they're actually on sale. There's also the fact that some of the companies Graham is buying really sucked. They were terrible companies. They were run by liars. They were run by cheats. They were, they were bargain basements, but oh my God, they really lacked intrinsic value. And that's where all the risk was. And so he, he was buying, you know, a couple hundred to avoid those problems, let some of those go bankrupt. But Charlie Munger, who became Buffett's partner, persuaded Buffett around 1960 to stack, kind of step away from the cheap stuff, the junk, and start looking for value in the company as an operating entity, something that could provide intrinsic value above just the price of its assets. In absence of an economic recession or a depression, finding real value, finding where you're getting a price below the true value of the company requires an understanding of the company's value as a business, as a business, okay? And that's the critical big change. Graham didn't worry about it so much as a business, he just looked at the numbers. Whereas Buffett and Munger look at it as a business. Now, Graham's worldview, the original value investing guy, was to own stocks when others didn't want them at all. Buffett and Munger built on those principles, but applied them to the kind of markets we're in and focused on owning something really good, something they called a wonderful business and buying wonderful businesses when others think they're having a problem. So value investing today, in today's economy, means that you've gotta be really patient. You've gotta have a list of wonderful businesses that you wanna own, that you're very confident that you understand, rather than just a pile of junk that meets certain economic requirements. We wanna own a company that we can own forever. And we're gonna to get to buy that company once in a while. And that's why we have to be patient. These great companies don't just go on sale for no reason. They go on sale pretty much only when the entire economy goes into a recession or their industry goes into a recession. Value investing today requires a lot of knowledge about the business, about what that business is really worth as an operating business. And that's what allows us to find a really great opportunity to buy something on sale when the market shifts. Value investing has made an enormous evolution 
since the days of Ben Graham. There are certainly a lot of investors that continue to try to invest the way Ben Graham does uh, and call themselves value investors. But Buffett and Munger are value investors of a very certain kind that we call rule one investors. Investors that focus on never losing money, focus on a wonderful business, focus on understanding what makes that business wonderful for the long term and buying and holding these great businesses forever if we can. And that is never gonna change. Now I'd love to hear from you guys. Do you consider yourself a value investor? And if you do, are you a ruler type value investor or a Graham type value investor? Leave your comment below with your answer. I'll be sure to follow up with you. So thanks for watching you guys. Now go play. Hey, if you enjoyed this video and you feel it was valuable in teaching you more about value investing in today's market, hit the like button and please share this video with your friends. And if you want more investing content, subscribe to my channel and don't forget to click the button on the screen for a free gift. Thanks again for watching.